Uh, I'm going to admit everyone. Jared, you okay with that, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They are all joining. Excellent. I'll let you know when they're all in. Hey, Mr. Sawyer just joined us as well. I was just well. going to say, I see Dave. Good evening, Dave. Good evening. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Can everyone hear us okay? Uh, yes, Ken. Good. Hey, Justin and uh, everyone from the waiting room is uh, has joined. Excellent. So we'll call the meeting for January 17th uh, to order. I believe we have uh, myself, Brad Town, um, Flo Smith, and Dave Sawyer joining us. Correct? Yes. All right, Vince. Any uh, any additions or changes to the agenda? Um. Yes. One one item is the um, review of the uh, select board report for the town report. Um. But. That was it, and that will need signatures as well. So, uh, anything there's there's several documents that uh, need signatures tonight. I will ask Diane to send them for electronic signature this week. Um, if that can't be done, I'm happy to meet you somewhere to have them signed as well. Yep. Now the review of the select board report. Um, you've got that prepared. Have we seen that? I, I don't remember seeing it. Uh, yeah, there was a revised one sent out. Thank you to Flo for the comments. She did comment on it, and I made some corrections based on those comments or some changes. Um, there's a couple more small edits uh, to, to be done, but you do have the... Okay, it's in our documents right here. Okay. Yes, yeah, it should be in your documents, hopefully, Excellent. or on a separate email. I had to send several. Oof. I saw that, too. Let me see if I can pull the agenda back up again. Um, this is exciting. So now it's not, let me see the agenda that I just had up. <laughs> well, uh, any public comment? All right. Hearing none, let's just throw the, uh, let's deal with the, the select board report right now while I'm dealing with this. Flo, made, you made some changes. Yeah, and Vince went forward with the changes, and uh, there were just a couple more that I had, and one was to include how people could um, put in for wanting to be on commissions and boards and things of that nature. But otherwise, the content has been revised, and I think it covers most everything, and Vince did a good job doing the adjustments. Okay. Brad, Dave, did you have an opportunity to review that? Dave, you're muted. We can't hear you. Yeah, I, I had a chance to look it over and everything looked pretty good to me. Okay. And I just made some minor changes and, and gave those to Vince today, which he can adjust as he feels necessary. Under town staff, we were notifying the town of his uh, start date, et cetera. And I just uh, mentioned there to include his name. Yep. Um, but everything was fairly minor, except that section that I thought would be good to add, you know, in terms of how we change some of the process regarding, you know, commissions and boards, but just to encourage people, you know, cause we always appreciate everyone in that regard. Um, so, I guess we would entertain a motion to uh, approve it, if we can. Uh, must need I to mean, have, we must have a deadline for it, right Vince? Yeah. Uh, the other person has call captions enabled. Please start speaking. I make the motion to approve the select board report as presented with just a few minor changes that Vince will incorporate. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
uh, Dodge Farm Road discussion. So we talked about this a few times um, back on the agenda. We uh, think that how did we left it at the last meeting that the board was going to put some additional thought into it, and figure out where we stood, um, what we thought. You know, Roberta had asked for or Ray had asked potentially for us to uh, maybe not require paving of that road. Um, and David pointed out that a section of the, what we had looked at for potential policy for that um, showed not necessarily that we had to pave an entire road um, or had that, that, that the, in order for us to take it over that the entire road needed to be paved, but there was maybe a 40 foot apron into the entrance. Um, we looked at, we, we had had some discussion about how many dwelling units were going to be up there. Um, does anybody from the board remember or Vince remember any other discussion or topic items that, that came up that were, were important um, well, that we, we haven't discussed or any anything that maybe we missed or anything like that? Um, the, the only thing I would add is I did have um, a, a resident come in. Uh, there's an additional, I think it's... Um, it's on my desk, actually, at, uh, approximately 300 feet off the right hand side of the cul de sac um, that was uh, overlooked that they also want to have considered. It goes up to the first uh, plot there on the right um, off that cul de sac. Right. That they so also want considered. 300 feet, is that a one, one resident? drive at that point in time it goes up to the first resident there is another resident further out at the end as well uh, i believe uh, but this one goes up to the uh the first resident's house on the right i can i can uh i may have sent you the map i'm pretty sure the map is yeah it is it's in the package yeah i'll pull it up right now i just wanted to this is ray if i could speak go ahead ray um, is actually that furnishes three driveways uh, for lot six, seven, and, and eight. Uh, okay. And that that little bit of a spur goes to just beyond the second driveway, so that the driveway to the last house would be a driveway, not town owned. Right. So has when my question would be, you know, with like. Tim, has Tim been up and looked at that and looked at where we would turn our trucks around if we were to do it? Um, you know, like not, not that I know of, Justin. Right. So I think, you know, I think that right now um, we would have to have Tim involved again if we were going to look at it by adding that in. Um, I think just because it's a new addition, it's new, you know, I mean, I don't. I don't think the board could probably say, okay, well, let's add it, even even if it made perfect sense without without knowing, you know, what we'd have for access with the town vehicle. Um, and I'd, I'd hate to speculate for Tim. I think that the town was, I think that the board may have been ready to make a decision um, with what we already had there tonight. Um, but I don't know, I don't know about if we're adding that piece on if we if we'd be able to do all of it tonight so yeah um, no there's no great rush anyway there's a number okay. of number of items that you folks want fixed with the road that we're yep. going to have to uh make do before you take it on anyway um right. so uh, take take all the time you need justin i think i think where the i just my i'll share my thoughts is that i think the board was definitely leaning towards taking that road over and, and maybe not requiring paving it uh just maybe paving in a little bit um off the existing blacktop for a transition that's there uh -huh. uh, i think that john quinn brought up some valid points that not all roads need should be paved um just for maintenance over time things like that uh, yeah. so, so i believe we were leaning towards it um, and I, there's definitely some other things that, that we need to do, um, but that doesn't mean we can't come to an agreement prior to all of those being done and then, then have something set for you. What, what may happen, what I, what I hate to see happen is if 
there's a transition in the board and you've been working with one board on this and it, there's a substantial transition after town meeting to uh, have any delay or frustration for anybody um, since, since both parties have been working on this pretty, pretty hard. Uh, it would be good if we could get Tim's uh, input and get something done before March meeting. Right, I don't know if it's an all or, or nothing for this this particular road or how the residents feel up there. Um, well, uh, we had a meeting and all the residents are in favor of the town taking it on. Right. Um, the only problem was with the the uh, issue of paving that that struck a, 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 a that was a silver bullet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't know that it. I don't know that it's necessary. I mean, it, it. I mean that that could be could be an issue down the road for the town too. You know, it's an added expense if, if we needed to repave that road at some point in time. Um, whereas yeah, with right. the, the right right ditching and right grade on that, all of it should be relatively maintenance free throughout the summer. It's not like it's getting a tremendous amount of traffic. It's all pretty much oh. all fairly residential. So we've only got uh, one one house left to build and all the 10 wheeler traffic will come to an end hopefully <laughs> right um so so i guess just with that new addition uh that new piece um being put in there vince i i don't know if if you can make if tim's been made aware of it um or yeah. if we can maybe get his thoughts or if you really i don't know yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't been up to, uh, we haven't been up to look at it like we did the uh, first section where we, we took the photos and, and looked at all of it, took the measurements and so on. Um, I will uh, talk to him to see if we can do it. Uh, I don't know the with the snow or not, I, but uh, I think we can. I, I don't see it happening prior to the March meeting because, I mean, if we were to do our due diligence from the town's perspective on that piece, you know, we... We looked pretty thoroughly at, at that section of road that we were looking to take over. Uh, the engineer's report that, that you guys sent us, Ray, I don't know that that piece was included. Yes, yeah. Uh, that wasn't it. Was that included in the report that we received? Yes. Yeah, we, we furnished a copy or a number of copies. Right, but that section, this new 300 foot section or whatever, oh. that was included in no, it? No, no, no. No, it, it wasn't just I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Right. You. right. So we would we would probably require that. Um yep. my, yeah. I would I would probably suggest to you guys that for right now, if you wanted to try to get something done prior to the first of March, that that maybe we look at just sticking with what the existing piece is, the existing road that we talked about. Um, and then go from there if you guys were comfortable with it. I'm not really sure. Uh, it's definitely it's definitely going to be a while because with it you know it's it's not starting from square one but it's definitely it's def certainly certainly going to have to follow the same process that we did already with the rest of the road to get that section up to speed if that's what we're going to do okay so, well maybe it makes sense then to uh hopefully get get the first part of it approved and see if we can't add that two or three hundred feet on uh, at a later date yeah, that, that I think that that would probably be be ideal. Um, so, um, if we, from the board's perspective, with everything we've looked at, um, with the original section, not including the the additional section that's included that was included for discussion tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Flo, Brad, Dave, do you have any comment on that? Well, I'm just after looking at that report and stuff on that, it, all, all the items that were pointed out in that report is that uh, those items would be corrected. If we were to approve this, those items would be brought up to the to the standard, correct? Absolutely. Right. We just yeah, got to wait. Good weather. <laughs> so, Dave, Dave, the idea was with all of those items that on the list that, that we we went through. Uh, prior to the town accepting that as a town road, that section, uh, those would be brought up to those standards. They'd be improved and otherwise we wouldn't take it over. All we would be looking to do is saying, okay, well, we would accept this as a town road uh, if all of these are brought up to the standards that were specified. I mean, 
and, and until that, until they were brought to those standards, the town would never, wouldn't accept that. Exactly. And, and you'd be coming up with some kind of transition between the intersection, uh, I would think, between that where the paved is and then going into the unpaved, there would be a certain amount of footage that would get paved. Right. And I don't know what that was. Okay. Uh, well, no, I just, as long as there was something that that's in there, because I don't think it would make sense. Uh, it, it, it's not going to maintain. Uh, the road will be deteriorated if you didn't do that at some point. So. Right. So uh, what was it? You had pointed it out. What was it that it stated in that then? Do you remember? How far in off the off the edge or off of an apron we needed to go in or whatever you call it? Uh, I'd have to go back and look at my notes on that one. I, I believe it was 40 or 50 feet, but don't quote me on that. I'd have to go back and look at it. Right. So I could see where the board could approve the that road being taken over with the that recommended apron or transition, whatever you want to call it, um, without it being paved, because I think it'll be easier to maintain in the long run. I could see where the board could could say, all right, we'll take, we'll, we'll adopt that as a town road once all the standards are met. We could put that forward so that, that these guys, these guys would at least have that accomplished. Um, if you guys feel the same, I'd entertain a motion and more discussion. I don't see if that's a problem, Justin. We, we can add that to it. It's not a problem. Yeah. I know that we had paved the entrances, uh, to the trailer park and i think the state standard was 25 feet and we added 25 feet only because of the stopping and starting so i think that the total we did was 45 feet it seems to be holding up real well uh and i say we at the at the at weston's trailer park before we were having you know some uh, significant uh potholes being developed because we didn't have that extra 20 feet. Now it's, we've seemed to correct that by going to uh, 45 feet. Right. Plus it allows for the transition for like if they're salting and things like that to not be correct. Silly. So I, I think Vince, I think it was probably 50 feet. Honestly, Vince has it. Vince will deal with okay. that. Um, but it was written in that. Um, it was already written into the uh, policy. That we didn't okay. adopt the policy, but it was kind of a, a, a general policy we were looking at from when we did Egg Partridge Farm. So, so yeah, yep. As long as we have that and it's brought up, I I personally would enter. Yeah, I'd be okay with it. So I don't know if you guys want to make a motion well, or not. I'd be willing to make a motion that uh, the original amount of roads to uh, the town adopted, as long as we went to the standards that uh, Vince had found on the uh, paving. And uh, and not to not to not to include the additional three hundred feet. And I would add, not including the paving at this time, unless that's determined down the road. Right. So so we got to stick to our original motion. Um, and he didn't have the paving included in there. Only only the transitional strip flow. Perfect. So, then so, I second that motion as presented. Thank you. There we go. Uh, any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. There you Thank go. You. So, so we'll, we'll, if you guys want to look at that other 300 feet, we can look at that at, at a separate time, but at least we've got that handled for you. Um, yep. And I, I appreciate all the development and tax dollars and everything that's going on up there. Hope everybody's enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, well, it seemed seem to be anyway. <laughs> thank you all. Yeah, well, thank you guys, thank you. appreciate it. Yeah. All right, Conservation Commission recommendation to the board regarding a land sale request of a parcel on Belknap. Who do we, we have the Conservation Commission with us this evening? Yeah, Mr. Willard is with us tonight. Good evening. You, you have the letter in your package as well. Yep, starting to pull it up right now. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Very well. Got my driveway shoveled anyway. Well, I haven't been able to get out of my driveway all day, but I'm driving a 
rental vehicle from Florida. <laughs> so while I'm pulling this up, uh, I don't think they had made us any firm offer on this land or, or any sp specified monetary amount, but, but where, what is the conservation commission's opinion? Well, I think um, I can't add a lot to uh, to what uh, Wendy Bowles um, put in the letter, but um, a recommendation of the select board is that the uh, town retain that 17 acres for a number of reasons. Um, I can go over them quickly, maybe. It, one, uh, that 17 acres is adjacent to a uh, map deer yard. Um, I walked the area with uh, Phil Gentilly and, and Wendy Bowles. There was a considerable amount of uh, white-tailed browse all through the 17 acres. There was evidence of a lot of other white, uh, other wildlife use. I personally think it's probably important for a wildlife corridor being sort of wedged between the interstate and, and the pond and the pond road. Um, there is significant timber stand there. Um, I, I briefly talked with uh, a couple of the uh, recreation uh, board members while we were flooding the ice, and uh, they thought that there was potential for, on that side of the watershed, uh, the class four road that comes up. Uh, I don't know what the name of it is anymore, but. Uh, Belknap? Yes. Belknap Road, um, that that could be a, uh, if not a mountain bike, uh, a hiking, any kind of a trail on that side of the mountain that would go to that particular parcel. That parcel does have spectacular views uh, over toward the Sugarbush uh, mountain range. So it is kind of a beautiful little 17 acres. So. Basically, for those reasons, um, the Conservation Commission uh, strongly suggested that uh, that the town retain that uh, parcel. Okay, um, I, I I I would think that the town at this point would want to retain it regardless. I I think that those are all incredibly good reasons why we'd want to continue to retain it regardless of an offer. Um, I don't know how the other board members feel, but to me. To me, I mean, it was, we didn't, we just got asked, would you be interested in selling it? Um, and so we forwarded it on to you folks. And, and based on your input, I, I would say that the town, it's my opinion, I can't speak for the rest of the board, but I don't think they can speak up. I just, I wouldn't be interested in selling it. But, um, I'm in everybody? favor of retaining the property as opposed to selling it for all the reasons that were presented by Tom this evening, as well as the letter that we received. I, okay. I feel the same way. All right, well, then I guess that pretty much solves that. We, it doesn't require a vote or anything. So since we haven't had an offer or anything like that, so I guess that's, that's that, right? How do you feel, Vince? Have we handled that? Tom, do you, do you feel like we've handled that appropriately for your, your needs on the conservation commission? Excellent. I think the conservation commission certainly would be uh, grateful. If, if the board, uh, is, if my understanding is correct, Justin, the board's telling me that the land is not for sale and I will notify uh, the person that's interested in it of that. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Appreciate it, everybody. Don't don't stay up all night doing this stuff. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate you being Thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we got town meeting schedule ballot discussion. Yes. Uh, once again, the governor has uh, loosened the requirements so that the same uh, the same rules apply that did last year. So it could be conducted as it was last year. So I've got three different scenarios. I'm happy to read out that uh, Rosemary presented to me for, that the board um, just basically needs to make a decision on which way we want to do it. So the first one is everything is normal. An in-person meeting on Saturday, voting on Tuesday, uh, absentee ballots, 
uh, for the town, the school, and the CVC, C ballots mailed by voter request. Um, uh, the second scenario is all by Australian ballot with an inform informational meeting within 10 days prior to March 1st, voting in person on Tuesday. Absentee town ballots, school ballots, and CVCC ballots mailed by voter request. And that is the uh, preferred at this point from, uh, from Rosemary as well. Uh, and then the third is all Australian ballot informational meeting within 10 days prior to March 1st. Town ballots mailed to every unchallenged voter. Absentee school ballots and, and CVC ballots by voter request only. Um, so again, the school ballots, I, I'm not sure that Middlesex has uh, voted yet. They were the last ones uh, left out there. So I don't know where that stands. I'd have to find out. And the CVC ballots can't be mailed unless they're requested by the voter. So even if the okay. town and the school ballots are mailed um, to everyone, then the CVCC ballots will not be at that point. So those are the notes that, uh, that Rosemary gave me. And her recommendation is as follows. Uh, I recommend that we go with number two above, as I mentioned, with no in-person town meeting, the absentee ballots sent by request of the voter. Um, and she also recommends that we send inf an information sheet to all the unchallenged voters to let them know of the changes that there'll be no town meeting and, and in-person voting on Tuesday. And they will have to request their absentee ballot if they choose to not vote in person. So it'll be the equivalent of last year? Yes. I would, I would think that that, that, would, that would make the most sense to me um, at this point in time. Okay. One other thing before you move forward, Justin, on that for a vote. Um, she did also ask me to mention that the Grange has again requested tax exemption this year and that should be a floor vote so the select board would again have to put it on the ballot for a one year exemption as it was done last year for the Grange. So that should be part of the uh, motion if you decide to go that way. Well e either way if we decide to have that be part of it or not be part of it. Right, right. It, it's a separate item I would yes. assume. Um, <laughs> So, so that I would make. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. I would make a motion to go with option two and including uh, the items uh, for the greens that uh, Vince just described. I second that motion. Any discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. So for dedication discussion. Excuse me. So, so what happens with the school ballots under option two? <laughs> absentee. I'm going to read it again. It says absentee town ballots, school ballots, and CVCC ballots mailed by voter request. Yeah, but didn't didn't you authorize the school board to to send them? automatically right so that dave they're still waiting on um right and they're um, waiting on middlesex and middlesex meets tomorrow and i don't know what middlesex will do but if middlesex says yeah go ahead and do it then they'll they'll it'll that that the school ballots will all go out from this yeah so the school ballots would go out but the town ballots would if middlesex says yes that's my understanding of it yep okay i just want to make sure i understand thanks yep good, good question So, do, 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 do. all right, uh, where were we? Town report dedication discussion. Yep, I think Flo had asked that to be on the agenda. She wanted to, uh, to talk about that, I think, tonight. Yes, I had asked for it to be put on the agenda so that we could put some names out and thoughts and we could make a decision um, in terms of going forward with that and who we were going to propose. Okay. I, I'd just like to throw out one thing that the, the staff um, had uh, had a recommendation to me about uh, having Henry Legue have it dedicated to Henry Legue this year. I would I would that was the name that popped right into my head and I'd already been thinking about it this year myself. So I, I, I just wanted to put that out there for the staff. Yep. Somebody else have does anybody else have any recommendations? 
I had some additional names for recommendations based on all of their involvement with the town. And um, um, do you have the list that I sent to you? I want to make sure I don't miss anyone that I suggested. But I had suggested Carlin the Weasel, Brad Town, uh, Robert Warnick. And I feel it may have been another person that I had recommended, but the name escapes me right now and I apologize, but Vince has the list as well. Yep. Well, it sounds like you put some thought into it, Flo. Uh, typically, you know, I think we get into this pattern of recognizing people that are no longer with us and that that's a shame. So I can appreciate the idea of personally, the idea of, having it dedicated to somebody while they're still here. Um, I, think all, I think a lot of people, all those people you listed have put in a tremendous amount of time and energy in uh, moving the town forward. Um, Another thought that I had is we could do sort of a half and half, and that doesn't necessarily mean two people, but we could have Henry Legue, and then we could have the other individuals under the cohort of moving the town forward. Yeah, I mean, you could you could do like a special thank you and you could have a dedication, but then also have maybe like an exceptional thank you section if you wanted to, I suppose, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, Henry did a tremendous amount for the town over the years. Um, he, he served on a lot of the boards, he did a lot. Um, and I, and I, think, I think I personally feel like it, if, if there was ever a year where it was pretty obvious to dedicate a town report to somebody this, this year, it would be Henry. Um, that's just my opinion. I, I, but I do, I, I wouldn't mind adding, you know, thank you for your service or the time and energy you put in for a lot of these volunteers that are out there. So absolutely uh, across the board. I don't know. If that, is this something we need to completely discuss and have an answer on tonight? But it's, no, I think we still have, uh, well, actually, yes, because the, the, the town report has to be out to press before the next select board meeting. So, yes, we will need a, a decision. Right. So, I'll let the board decide. I, I, they know my thoughts, and they can make a motion and decide what they want to do, and we'll go from there. <laughs> just waiting on waiting on somebody to tell me what they want to do i i i personally make a motion to uh uh recognize henry Legue this year in in the uh uh town report for the board yeah second any discussion those in favor say aye aye, aye. Motion carries. Um, all right, town manager versus town administrator discussion. Yeah, this got tabled at the last meeting uh, because they felt that uh, you should be present for that discussion, Justin. <laughs> so this one's all on you, I think. Well, I'll take all the blame. Um, so what I'd ask Vince to do, honestly, was look over what the advantages and disadvantages were from a municipal management standpoint of the, the town manager versus the uh, town administrator position. And, you know, I'm sure there's pros and cons to each scenario. And I assume that, you know, I just didn't know. So more or less some just information on it and then having a discussion briefly with the board about it because I think it's something that as the town grows and develops I mean when you look at some of the larger municipalities in the area which we're, we're not even close to yet but we, we do have a lot of a lot more business than some of our surrounding towns that we handle on a weekly basis it may make sense to, to take a peek on and seeing whether or not it's feasible for us to adopt that model of government for our town so just to jump in, Justin, I did uh, put in your package a uh, town administrator or a town manager um, presentation. There's a PowerPoint. Um, I'd like to say I wrote it, but I'd be lying if I did. I plagiarized this. I found it it's from a, it's something that another uh, town had used that I thought fit very well. There's a lot of 
facts in there that they brought up. Uh, they did mention some of the pros and cons as well. And um, even I think a couple of things about what the statutes say uh, with regard to it as well. So it's, it's a pretty good report or uh, presentation uh, with, with some useful information. I mean, at this point in time, we're, we're pushing pretty close to, to get it on. I mean, I don't know how we would get, we were looking to just have an opinion vote on it, right? Because this would require a charter change. Right, right. It, it can't be, it can't be done for March now. Um, and we talked about that in the last meeting. Um, we'll have, there'll be another, you know, there's an election year coming up, so there'll be one in August. Um, so there's, it could potentially make the, uh, the August one. We'd have time to warn it and get information out. Um, should that be the direction that I, I, I think wants to go? My fear, my fear with this, with 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 any transition in the board, is that there, if we start, I mean, we're gonna if we have a conversation tonight and there's not going to be any chance for action prior to to town meeting, that that we could. I don't want to. I don't want to have have a conversation start from scratch, but that's basically where we're starting right now. Um, so I'm not sure what what the board feels, how they feel about continuing this conversation, or whether whether it honestly gets tabled until after town town meeting, because it's going to require a significant amount of. I mean, it's going to require some time on behalf of the the select board moving forward, right? I agree with you, Justin. I don't believe it's something that we can act on, you know, quickly by no means, nor tonight. And it will require some time and review. And the reason we tabled it at the last meeting was because you had suggested it. And John and I were questioning some things around it. So this presentation that Vince did is very helpful and informational. Um, but I'm not at a point to make a decision on it at this time. And I right. think it will require some significant time. So I'm in agreement with what you just indicated. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I mean, I think that was more, more of my thoughts on it. I, I wish, I can never seem to get everything done in time. So um, I feel like, unfortunately, this is such a large item. And then, you know, if, if we're going to take a look at having to make a charter change for that, there's probably other other items we may want to look at at the same time uh, from a board perspective so we can tackle it all at once to Good me, point. to me it would to me it would help make you know there's some obvious things that are potential questions as far as you know maybe staffing and management that, that seem to come up um, i've talked with some other surrounding communities um, and their board members and and they feel as though most of that is is, is, is not an issue. Um, they've never seen issues uh, by changing to the it, it town manager form. Uh, but, but I know that that was one of the concerns uh, that a lot of people have is just staffing and, and control and oversight of the board, I guess, to some extent um, for town employees. But I, I, I think that a lot of that hinges on your relationship with your, your town manager. So I think that, that that makes it so that it's easier for the board to manage one individual potentially, and and it allows the administrator or town manager to not feel so um, restricted and be able to take action and make make some decisions. I'm sure, not speaking for Vince, but just if this for when it comes up in the future, I'm sure that coming from the private sector. Vince is somewhat frustrated with how long it takes to, to, to take action on things um, in the current model. Um, so I think that the town may be pleasantly surprised with the, the production or the level of efficiency from not only the administrator or manager, but also just overall with projects in the town should they adopt that model. Uh, that's all. That, that was my biggest concern is that it doesn't I think it could be much more efficient for our community and, and make things happen faster and more timely for the town. But I guess it sounds like we should table it, um, unfortunately, until after town meeting. <sighs> Anybody else have any comments on that? Vince, any comments on that? No, no. <laughs> 
right. Um, audit reveal with Diane. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Um, in looking at the audit, I and mean, you have some of the paperwork that Vince sent to you, uh, the general fund had an increase of 554000 last year, which is significant. And a lot of that has to do with a lot of money. Well, we received a lot of money, not ARPA money at that time, but we did receive money um, for different plans, uh, programs that we had. We had grants for the CD. RP grant, and we had a lot of other grants that we received. Now, some of these grants, we have not spent the money on yet. So in other words, we get the money, but the work is not gonna be done until FY22, and a lot of it has been done in FY22. So that is part of the increase. The other part of the increase is that we did have more revenues that we had an not anticipated. For instance, um, the, the money that we got from, let me just look at this real quick here the records restoration for instance that we made like twenty thousand more so there's an awful lot of money coming in and also we didn't have a complete staff so there was a time for nine months we did not have a town administrator our police staff was never full and even the highway department was down so there was there was not as much expenses in those departments and also we did not do some paving projects that we had anticipated doing so that is why we have such a significant increase. Now, the audit is not complete yet. We get the first draft, which has been sent to you, and I think they're still working on the notes. So um, when they are complete, the, um, we will have somebody come from, um, be Linda Mullen, they'll be come, coming from Father Gill and Sigali and just going over the information. But I wanted to give you a heads up that, you know, so far, this is the information that we have. Okay, thank you. Well, that's it with the uh, audit review. Public works position discussion. Take it away, Vince. Okay, thanks. So in your in your package, you'll see a uh, job description. That's basically uh, Tom had provided me from the public works board. Uh, they're making a, a couple of recommendations here to the select board for consideration. One is this specific job, which is a public works board supervisor. Um, the details of that are, are laid out in this job description with the duties and responsibilities and such um, that, you, that you have. Um, and, the, and the second one is that they're looking for the board to consider moving towards a public works department. Right now it would be a one-man department. Uh, with this, with this creation of this position, um, so I just uh, want to put that out there as well. Um, I don't know if you need me to go through the duties and responsibilities. Uh, if you want to take time to, you know, look at it now, um, or if you want me to put it on the next agenda for further discussion into the details after you've had a chance to review this, unless you've reviewed it. From the from the package that was sent already, I reviewed it. Well, I I'd, I'd like to actually, Vince. I'd like your perspective on what you believe should be the best approach for the town, based on how you've seen it. The the what you think we need operationally, what'll be the best, most functional like most functional position, how it'll be best handled. Um, you know, I hate to we we add on a position, but. You know, we, I, I, the efficiency of, of some of it, you know, I mean, ultimately it would, you'd have to keep an eye on it for the board. Um, so, so your perspective and, and your background, I think would add a tremendous amount of value and help guide the board in that process. Okay, thanks for that. No, I'm happy to speak to it though, Justin. Um, again, it goes back to a little bit about what we talked about in the kind of the retreat when we talked about the structure and as the, as the town grows, right? Then, we all know the town's growing and it's going to continue to grow. Um, are we at the point where we need to start considering this? I, I'm thinking so, uh, quite frankly, at this point. Uh, we have a lot of projects that are in the works. Um, we have a lot that still need to, to come. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it seems to make sense to, to start in that direction to me to have that public works department, someone responsible, looking over that, following it up, 
uh, taking the actions that are needed on the on our you know water and sewer systems that that keep expanding and growing and need to develop. Vince, those, those services right now, those are contracted services, aren't they? They are, yes. And, and do you know roughly what those contracted services are costing the town uh, annually? I, I should, I had it, but I don't have it on my notes in front of me, but Diane might be able to pull that out. She's the one that writes the checks, so she may be able to give you a closer number than I could. I think, okay. I, think that's okay. I think that's okay for this evening because we're going to end up bringing this discussion up at another meeting. Yep. Um, so let's, let's just have that information at our next meeting, if that's okay. okay. Yeah, no, I, think, so I think that makes sense only for serving on that board, uh, the Public Works Board there for a while. There's a lot of information that if we don't move in that direction, I feel uh, down the road that we're there's some... Uh, there's some knowledge out there through the contractors that are currently doing that, that if we don't capture that information and, and these individuals are uh, retire or, or go out, that we're going to be at a great disadvantage. Uh, uh, to your point, that's, you're right. And that's one of the points that they did, they did bring up as well, uh, Dave. And they have a timeline that they'd like to, to move through with this, you know, as far as, you know, starting starting to interview prospective qualified candidates um, and making a decision to get somebody in uh, around, the, I believe, the March or April timeframe so that they can spend the next two to three months working with the consultants that we have to do exactly that, gain the knowledge, you know, the tribal knowledge that they have uh, around that uh, before they are up and running on their own, right? And then in uh, you know, the following six months after that, they would be, you know, up and running on their own after a few months with the consultants. Okay. So you, you're right, Dave, you know, we should, and Justin, we should have this, uh, you know, if you, if you have questions that you want me to have, we should get them out and I can get them answered and we can have it on the next agenda uh, and maybe even have someone from the public works board here uh, as well. Uh, to, to speak to it, if you'd like. Who's the, who's I, I personally think that would be a very good good thing to do is to have those numbers, know where we're at, and, and then have somebody from the Public Works Board uh, to, to do a presentation, to at least, to, you know, because they're hands-on. You know, these guys are, are uh, you know, they know what we need. And uh, I, just, I just feel that it's a direction I think we should be heading in. All right, so let's do this. Let's let's we can email any questions or any information that we want for our next meeting uh, when this is going to be a topic to Vince, um, one of which will be, you know, our, our costs currently. Um, and then we can invite the chair, obviously, of the Public Works Board, along with any other any other members that, that would like to speak to that, um, because and they should be prepared to give us some some sort of recommendation, uh, which which and have a you know kind of a question and answer type conversation does that make sense absolutely okay Flo did you want to add anything to that I know you said you reviewed both of them I did I just wanted to add in that I did review the um, paperwork that we had in our packet that outlines the position and the duties qualification skills and abilities etc I thought it was well written. I thought it touched on everything. And uh, I think that that's in a good stead. So if we put it on the next agenda and do everything as you described, I think we'll be in a really good position. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, you ready for some budget review? <laughs> All right, let's get that rolling then. Hey, again, I sent you in a kind of an abbreviated package, right? It, it, uh, it has the uh, overall overview. It has the numbers that were presented last time, and then it highlights the, the changes that were made based on the request that, uh, that I was given, a direction I was given. So I can quickly run through that if you like. Well, I wasn't. I wasn't at the next last meeting. So, yeah, if you don't mind running through it real quickly and showing us what it looks like, telling us where the changes are that satisfied. Yep. 
recommendation. So, yeah, uh, I'll start off with where we were. We were at 7.8% on the last, on the initial presentation of the budget to the board. So that was uh, a grand total of uh, 3,988,809. Okay. Okay. So looking at it, you know, we had a, we had a fair amount of conversation around it, and and most most all of it made sense. Um, but I, I did want to make uh, drive one point home again that just with the cost of expenses that increase that we have little or no control over insurances, um, um, benefits, and those type of things that increased by $111,151 over our 2022 budget. So that was 3% of our overall budget that that increased, right? Which, which, which is expected. I mean, everything's going up, so that's... Yes, yeah, it's, it's high, but it's expected to, to go up. Um, so that being said, you know, I, I put that back in the numbers, and, and because, again, it should be part of the overall increase, right? Um, so we took another hard look at the budget and we took um, $50,000 out of the administration budget. So what does that $50,000 look like out of there? It's uh, $40,000 for the office person that we were looking at um, hiring, right, for next year. Um, my backup proposal to that would be let's look at getting a temp um, and and use them to do uh, the sewer and water work that Diane is currently doing to relieve her of that that would take a large portion of it off um, again it would probably start out to be a part-time position um, and see the impact that that has um, and then look again maybe at next year if it's worthwhile hiring that other uh, staff administration person. Um, and also, the other 10K comes from removing the computers and equipment that we need to upgrade to and putting those under ARPA rather than in the budget. Use ARPA funds because they're qualified for ARPA funds. So take that out of the budget and put it under the ARPA. Okay, hold on on that one moment. So, so this administrative position that we had looked at adding was to help uh, alleviate or eliminate potentially some of the workload. And have you done, you, you've done some, you spent some time doing time cards and looking at that. And from your perspective, uh, you, you had made the recommendation to put it in there. So I'm just assuming that you thought it was important for the, for the town to have that position. Uh, how do you, how, what, from a, from a management role, how do you see that impacting the town uh, by, by not having that position? It, I, I'm just trying to, trying to think. I mean, it, just have that position in there because we felt like adding a position. No, that, that's had... correct. Um, and again, it, that, that position came about, again, based on some of the discussion that we had at the retreat about the structure uh, of the town and, it, and it's growing. Um, that's why I'm... I'm It'll hurt a little bit, um, you know, but uh, again, every, everybody's got to tighten the belt. We, we get that. Um, but adding, if we have the okay to move forward with a temp, uh, to at least take that portion of the work, and again, bear in mind, that portion of the work will also be paid by the uh, Public Works Board because that's the work that they'll be doing. Um, so it'll start out part-time. That'll give us time to kind of especially Diane, um, to catch her breath and have a look. We can reevaluate a little bit more uh, and fine-tune what we, what we really need going forward. So that, that, would, that would also fall under the Public Works Department discussion that we're going to have at our next meeting as well, I would assume. Yeah, it'll, it'll have to be brought up there, yes. Maybe we should be looking at that in there um, at that same time, just, just for conversation. That would be good. Yep. Uh, Okay, so you think the temp is, is a reasonable alternative. Now, what, what do you have for a budget for the temp in there? Uh, well, we don't have, I mean, it's going to be in the town budget, so. 
when you say when you say it's coming out of the town budget, a portion of that it's coming out of the town budget, but but then the billing of the temp would go under that under the other fund. Um, public works. Public works fund, so that that would yeah okay. So the temp wouldn't be added back into our municipal budget. That's with that. That's correct. Uh, correct. Okay. I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify and wanted to make sure that that was in our on our radar for our discussion with the Public Works Department conversation. Yep. Around. Okay. Shall I go on? Yes, please. Okay. So the the next the uh, we found was um, the assessors. Again, it's going to be similar here. Um, we were, we could be able to remove another twenty-three hundred dollars from the assessors, if again part of what we do for them is computer upgrade. Uh, if we use the ARPA funds for that twenty-three hundred dollars, that comes off our bottom line budget. Okay. Town meeting and elections. Um, again, we were able to come up with maybe a thousand dollars there um, for meeting an election ballots. Uh, if you know we're going to be, you know, we reduced it by a thousand from six to five. Um, that's going to be pretty tight. Uh, the only advantage that we may have is if we do the school ballots, we'll get reimbursed for that. So that may cover that thousand anyway. Okay. So that was. Uh, and then we go down to other boards and commissions. I think we took $1,500 out of the recreation board. They initially asked for um, $6,500. They're you know, planning on doing a lot of things and starting a lot of programs. Um, but we took $1,500 out and brought that down to $5,000. Town offices is the next uh, big expense. And I... I seem to have lost my sheet for the town offices. That's great. Town offices. We took ten grand out, and that was for, if I can find the sheet, town offices. All right. Page 20. Yep. And it was uh, under equipment contracts. Again, um, that was another $10,000 for the... Um, fees for the polymorphic software when our, our trial months are up, uh, that does qualify for ARPA funds. So again, I'm recommending that we use ARPA funds uh, for that. And then uh, the, the next big one is the capital budget. And out of the capital budget, we took, bear, bear in mind, our, our, our capital budget, budget um, we had a huge reduction in that already, uh, but we were able to find another uh, 75000 that we're going to take out of that. Uh, Twenty-five of that was for the, the uh, UTV vehicle. Um, it, was, it was discussed a little bit, and it was kind of a nice to have, but not necessary. Um, so, and then the other 50 came out of the... Um, Highway equipment budget, we had uh, 300 in there. Uh, we reduced that to 250. Um, we're hoping to offset that with, um, you know, with the with the trade-ins on the vehicles. Perhaps um, it'll, it'll offset some of that. Um, but again, looking forward at next year, uh, that 50. The intent will be to put that 50 back in there because again, we want that fund to build up so that every year we can pay for our vehicles with the trade-ins and not have um, not have to take out any loans and pay interest and that includes the greater loaders in the future so we want to we want to increase that fund over time to be able to have the cash on hand to pay for the vehicles not take loans absolutely so that all being said um, there is an executive session tonight um, to talk about personnel and that is on salaries. So I'm going to leave that portion of the budget to talk uh, talk about during executive session with you. Um, yep. But once that's rolled in, um, I didn't hit the number I was asked to achieve, 
but we're at about 4.06, so 4.1% increase overall from the 7.8 down to 4.1. So I would recommend too that in the I don't know how the board can do it, um, but but it seems like we approve a budget prior to knowing what the the school's going to do, uh, and that can be a that can be a tremendous swing one way or the, another on the the taxpayers. Uh, I feel like last year we were fairly level funded, and then we had a reduction in the school taxes, um, and that's that's primarily what caused the the Berlin tax rate to reduce, and and if we had done that. Uh, and kept it so that we, if we hadn't approved the budget until we knew what the schools were doing, you know, we worry about a three, four percent increase, which is, you know, fiscally, you know, responsible. Uh, but like last year, for example, we would have, we, if we had just kept it so that residents paid the same in taxes as they did the, the prior year without a reduction, we would have been able to put more in reserves to further reduce this year's budget and lessen that impact on them for an increase this year. Um, because we would have had that money set aside. So, so I think we'll talk about that, the, the, the personnel stuff in executive session, but I really would like to, or I don't know how we can do it. If there's, if there's a way to do it where we can come in at a certain number and say, okay, we approve, you know, this 4% increase, um, but, but, but set something up so that should, should there be, I mean, I don't know how to do it. If there's a substantial increase in the school, we can't really take anything significant out of our budget necessarily. Uh, but if, if there was say a reduction in the school, which I'm guessing there won't be this year. Uh, but if, if by chance there was like last year, we could keep the tax rate the same uh, with the combination of those two and set money aside. So for the residents, so that's, it, it would have been a good year to have some savings set aside for some of these other things uh, without, without it feeling like an impact on the taxpayers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So I don't know. I don't know what the, the deadline or time frame is for the school budgets to be to us, but to me, that's also a pretty big determining factor in, in the town budget. And I don't know if, if we can work on making sure we, we work more in line with that or in line with it, not more in line, just knowing what it is before we make our decision. Is that, is that even possible, Vince? That's a great question. I don't know. I believe uh, the budget it, for the school board is coming up on their meeting this Wednesday, but I'm not sure what their deadline is, if they'll be voting on it or not on Wednesday. Um, and then their follow-up one is the first week of February. And you'll be in attendance for that meeting as well, right? On Wednesday? Yeah, I'm going to be at the one on Wednesday. Yes. Maybe, maybe you could ask that question for us. Sure. They've approved the budget already. Um, they, they're approved the warning tomorrow night, but the budget's adopted and, you know, Berlin's, I think a 7.2 cent increase under the worst case scenario. Um, if the legislature were to throw all 90 million of the ad fund surplus at property tax rates, I think Berlin about 3.6 cents, um, but that's not gonna happen. So you're probably looking some kind of increase, but you know, it's not going to get worse than 7.2 cents. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> yep. Okay. Appreciate Dave. that update, Dave. I see. So we, we, what you're saying, Dave, is if we were, we could do a better job as a select board of knowing that information already before we make a call on our budget. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Anything else on the budget, Vince? Uh, no, we'll, we'll we'll discuss the rest in the in the final number. What that means after we talk about the the salaries and and personnel in executive session. Okay. There was one thing I wanted to add, if I could, under the expenditure summary on page nine. I'm wondering if we could pare down the amount that we're increasing under town meeting and elections. Um, you know, can you speak to that more? Well, what I understand from Rosemary, it's a two election year coming up. Mm -hmm. And so that it's just cost it's just more. a done deal. Yeah, it, yeah, mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. much. yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. I was looking at such a sizable increase, but that makes sense as you describe it. Yes, yeah, this, this is an expensive year for, 
before elections. <laughs> right, time. right. Good point. All right. So, well, that was, so you gave us uh, that. All right. Any, nothing else on budget review events? Uh, no, no, not at this point. No. Okay. Um, mask mandate discussion. I asked to have that put on the agenda. We had it on a past agenda and we postponed it for a future one and we hadn't circled back to it. So I just thought it would be wise. I also had two people approach me, one who works at a local facility in Berlin and another as a resident of Berlin, wondering if we were gonna discuss it again. Uh, one individual, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say the one individual that works at an establishment had been approached by a customer who thought Berlin already had a mask mandate. And basically there's other towns surrounding us that have put one in place. So I thought it would be wise for us to circle back and have a discussion, see where we stand on it, whether we want to discuss it at a future meeting or if we want to take action on it. So, so the reason that it got tabled until a future meeting was because we had a tremendous amount of, uh, there didn't need to be any action. Um, right. Because we had a tremendous amount of people reaching out, not hopeful that we wouldn't adopt a mask mandate. Um, right. Hopeful that, that we didn't need to. Uh, we had talked to some businesses and talked to residents and, and we did have an overwhelmingly, we, I, it was a lot, the people that reached out to us was, was very much not in favor of, of a mask mandate. On top of it, I don't know how we would administer it other than it's, I mean, it's really, you, you can't really write anybody an enforceable ticket. Um, I think it, we all have that choice. Um, so we had tabled it until, until it was brought up again. So I don't know what, what action you're looking for, Flo, tonight. Um, or, or if you just wanted to say, well, we tabled it, we hadn't talked about it, so I wanted to put it back on the radar. But, but I, I haven't had any changes in, in my perspective at this point in time. Um, and I don't know if you have or if the other board members have, if they, they'd like to speak up, but if we're more than welcome to entertain the conversation either way. So. Thank you. I think it's beneficial to have the discussion and get everyone's views on it. Um, times are changing and Certainly there's been additional, you know, um, increase in COVID and Omicron, et cetera. And also a lot changing in the news and other towns surrounding us. So I'd be interested in hearing the views of other board members and whether we want to make a decision or if we want to table it for a future discussion. Well, I think I, I just wanted to get your perspective flow and see what you were thinking. So I, I haven't formed an official decision or perspective per se. Um, I appreciate your views. I just wanted to have a full discussion with all board members. And I know that we've had it on the agenda before. You explained why we didn't discuss it then. And also the views and the people that had approached us that were against it. There could be very many people out there that are in, uh, you know, favor of going forward with it. So I just would like to hear everyone's views and determine how we're going to move forward. Well, I think, I think I'll, I won't speak for the rest of the board, but the, the reason we tabled it was because we, we, we tabled it with the opinion that if somebody thought we needed one, we would bring it back to the surface. So I guess, Dave, go ahead and, and speak, speak to your thinking. You know, I, I tell you, I've been traveling. Uh, I'm down in the thick of it right now. Uh, I personally, I think it, it should be left to the individual personal choice. If they want to wear a mask, uh, they can wear a mask. It's the same thing as, you know, if you want to be vaccinated, then you can be vaccinated. This trying to mandate people to, to uh, you know, to, to the government to mandate them to tell them what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. I just, I don't, I don't buy into that. And I, I personally am against being told that that's, that's what I have to do. I've talked with business owners in town. I've talked with residents, you know, some are both ways. 
And and some of them that that are telling me, oh no, we got a mandate, a mask mandate, and I ask them, are you vaccinated? No. Well, I I don't I I don't get it. And like I said, personally, I am against mandating for residents to have to or non-residents come into Berlin and have to put a mask on. Okay. Well, I don't know if Brad's still on. I know he's at home ill. Um, Good evening. But, but, but I, Brad, I don't know if you have anything quickly you want to add. I agree with Dave. There we go. He's back on mute. Um, I think that we, we had tabled it with the understanding that unless somebody wanted to make a, make a case to adopt a, adopt a policy that would, would add a mask mandate. Um, we had all the information we needed at the, at this moment in time. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add Flo? No, um, other than we have a person who's just joined us. I'm not sure if she would like to speak to this topic. We're talking about the mask the mandate mask right mandate. now. Yes, I would. So there is a lady here and she would like to discuss the mask mandate. Okay. And your, your name, ma'am? My name is Carol Bandy. Carol Bandy is the lady's name. We can hear but, yep. Thank you. Go ahead, Carol. Okay. Um, speak here. Sure, everyone can hear you, so you okay. can wherever's best for you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, masks don't work at all. At this point, the research evidence is very clear with strong studies that masks don't work. There are a few very weak studies that suggest mild effect, but they essentially do very, very little. And the kinds of masks that people wear are actually um, not recommended by the CDC. As of two or three days ago, they said, don't wear the surgical mask, don't wear the cloth mask. And those are the kind that people wear. So quite frankly, I don't think that it is the role of the select board to be uh, trying to control viruses because you don't know enough uh, about any of it, quite frankly. It's uh, a matter that is essentially outside of the wheelhouse of government. And I believe that the select board should stick to what it does very, very well in terms of taking care of the town of Berlin. The virus has mutated. It is now much weaker in its Omicron form. It's a cold as a result the um, death rate is going down steadily. So essentially the worst is already over with. And I see this as pointless and mass destroy compassion, empathy, neighborliness, and they give an, a mandate gives people the right, so they think, to scold their neighbors, and this is not good. Any kind of a mandate will lead to increased, not decreased conflict, because individuals believe that they have the right to enforce in the absence of law enforcement, and this creates conflict. So I strongly advise against a mask mandate. Thank you. Thank so, you. So I appreciate that input. That that continues to add strongly to the side we had just discussed, where we don't intend to adopt one at this moment in time. And uh, thank you for your perspective. So, Brett, we we weren't we weren't. Uh, I don't know. I, well, I wasn't the reason. I didn't put, ask to have it put on the agenda, but uh, I think we wanted to just have a conversation around it. And I think that unless we have some overwhelming evidence that it's significantly important for us to, to step into what I perceive as outside something that I could see as outside of our role. Um, I don't have any interest in adopting a mandate for our municipality either. Um, next up, we have approvals of license permits, vouchers and applications. 
I have that in front of me. I can go over that right now. I make the motion that we approve payroll warrant 22-14 for payroll from January 2nd, 2022 to January 15th, 2022 paid on January 19th of this year in the amount of $46,240.12. Also payable warrant 22G14 with checks 21708 to 21742 in the amount of $53,798.49. The December budget status report, trial balance report, and delinquent tax report. Anybody care to second that? Second. All right. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of minutes of the meeting of uh, December 20th, 2022. I didn't get a chance to review those, so I won't make the motion on that this evening. Neither did I. We'll table those. Thank you. Round, ta round table, Vince? <laughs> of course, I, if you're asking me. <laughs> well, I'm going to smash you first to get the worst out of the way. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, I'll be quick. Um, again, this is something that I'll put on the, on a future agenda or near, uh, soon um, to have further discussion and decisions on. Uh, one of them will have to be on the next me meeting as well. I was asked to go out for an RFP on Round Hill Fence and with uh, the quotes from Round Hill Fence and Security for the office security. Um, uh, so far, um, I've reached out to a couple of companies. Uh, they have advised me that it's going to take some, some time and that also potentially, and this is, Round Hill Fence is the first one that called me to give me this update as well. After the end of January, the cost of the electronics and equipment for these guys on the security side of things are going to go up by 20%. Um, so my thought on Round Hill is I did ask him um, before speaking with the board if if the board were to decide to split this so that it was less than $5,000 um, for each of the quotes that he provided, would he be able to if we committed before the end of January, would he be able to hold his price without a 20% increase? And he said he would. He did have, he thought he had enough equipment in stock uh, to hold that price. But if we go back out to bid beyond that, he, he, he can't hold his price. So we'll be looking at least a 20% increase with him as well as, um, you know, a couple of the others as well. So I just want to put that out there as food for thought. The, the second one that I have that's going to be coming uh, soon is um, our highway crew cannot communicate from the town garage over to Riverton um, and uh, sometimes over to Jones Brook uh, with the current radio system that they have. It's, it's not the radios, but it really comes down to a repeater. Um, so to upgrade their system, uh, again, I've got a quote from Burlington Communications. Um, it's a little under $20,000, but that includes, um, well, first of all, let me back up. We're reviewing the need for about $3,500 worth of radios. The radios that we have, um, there's a split. Four of them do not need to be changed, uh, and four that they've quoted do need to be changed uh, to be upgraded. Uh, but this includes um, getting located up on the tower so that they can communicate uh, through the entire town um, from, their, from their vehicles and equipment and from the garage as well. Um, apparently it's been brought up in the past, um, but never carried through. So I want to throw that out there. The only thing it doesn't include that we're investigating is the cost for rental on the tower. Um, they said it could, be as, it could be around $500 a month. But I've reached out to the tower people, being a municipality. Uh, Burlington Communications recommended that I talk to them. As a municipality, we may be able to get a better rate uh, on, on the uh, SBA tower. And also to Velco, because they they're on the second tower up there. 
and uh, they give reduced rates to municipalities as well. So those are the two things outstanding on it. But I, I wanted to bring that up again just to put it out there to get you thinking um, so that we can, we can plan. There is some money in the budget already um, for this uh, that's been carried over. Um, but uh, personally, I think they need to be able to communicate. Um, you know, Tim needs to be able to talk to those guys wherever they are in town, and right now he can't do that. What's the carryover okay. at present? Uh, I believe it's around 12000 And didn't we look at maybe having a conversation with uh, the uh, emergency management team and communicate? Wasn't there something about our radios and not being able, you know, needing to justify them that way as well? Maybe it was the police. I can't remember, but... I thought thought maybe it was this piece of it too. Should there be a you know a, a situation where the emergency management team needs to be engaged in the town of Berlin that we don't have the ability to, to, to communicate throughout the entire town? Um, yeah, so I don't remember that conversation myself. I'd have to look back, Justin. I, maybe I'm picking it up. I don't no, know. I'm sure I'm sure there was something that, <laughs> that was tied in. We, we talked about like a lot. Cut it briefly there and. It, it, and I think that it may be, yeah, we were using that also as, as a reasonable means for justification because that seems essential as well. Yeah. Um, then you asked me for some numbers, Justin, as well, a couple of meetings ago. I, I have the numbers for the calls to for the police and the fire to uh, yeah. CBMC, the medical right. center. So from the police, from uh, for this year, from 1st of January to 23rd of December, they've had 139 calls to the hospital. And, and that's typically a two-officer call, right? Typically, yeah. Because uh, they, the fire, whoop, go ahead. Sorry. They have a house in-house that handles it until it, it, until it, hit, it escalates to a point where they need, their, they need to call us, um, is my understanding. So, so there, we're over there. We're over there 100, how many times? 139 calls from January to December. Okay. So that's probably, I'm just trying to figure that out. Uh, do, do we call times average? a month. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the average duration. I wonder what the average duration of the call is and what that actually equates to for an expense on our, that services for just payroll alone. Gotcha. I, I don't have those, those times. Uh, the fire department was the other one you asked me for. Yeah. Uh, in 2021, they only had five calls. One was a vehicle in the parking lot leaking oil, and the rest were alarm activations. Okay. So, it's, I thought it would be more of our police department, anyhow. Have and they did they join and share their five year plan? The hospital? Yeah. Not yet. Not this entire show. Because I, I feel that their five-year plan and whatever their intentions are over there without them um, contributing to the, the pilot or any of that, I, I feel like the town of Berlin inherits other communities' uh, residents and they go there and then, you know, if they, they need our services, it goes on the back of Berlin residents. Those services are an expense to the town of Berlin. And not, maybe I don't understand how it all works being a hospital town, but to me, <laughs> because we have, we have that draw on our services, uh, it seems like an expense to the town, not, and I, and I don't know if they, we think they bring in other, other, other things in our community for, for that generate uh, revenue or taxable income or something like that, that offsets that, but but I just, I'm really trying to wrap my head around that expense to the Berlin residents and how to help try to curb some of that. Um, because as we look at these payroll, as we look at uh, like our budget, we look at, okay, well, instead of a 7% increase, we can cut it down to four and a half. If we cut this out or we cut that out, to me, a lot of that could be offset if we had uh, places that were using substantial amounts of resources contribute to our budget that currently aren't. Or, or maybe figure out ways to better manage those resource, those places that are using those resources that are of expense to the Berlin residents. Um, and, and to me, one of those, one of the, the largest expenses to us right now that areas where we could use improvement would be maybe some of our police department funding. Um, 
because we we're getting we have you know the hospital we have the hilltop in um and those those are those are pretty big draws on our our budget before we even worry about anything outside of that and those are all outside of our control and typically uh from other municipalities transferred to our community is kind of my perspective does that does that make any sense yeah so i'd like to see how we can as a board work towards maybe maybe it's maybe also with having a, a conservative budget also looking at being a little bit more proactive with asking or I don't know. I know we've caught, had many discussions on it, but I, I hope the board continues to uh, look at look at those options and, and and maybe if we're applying for permits or you know have it be part of our planning. Um, you know, if we're gonna if the hospital is gonna do an addition, look at you know how it may impact the community, things like that, or anybody, not just the hospital, but obviously any anybody, um, whether they're paying it taxes or not so yeah can have you asked them to come in and share that five-year plan Vince? yes and when when are they on the when have they said that they would be able to, to to do that for us they're they're not ready yet they uh they did mention it um when they came in i guess you weren't in that meeting and they talked about their expansion with the uh, uh psychiatric unit the beds that they were adding there the building that they were adding they, yeah. uh, they, they did talk about it there and said when they were, they would let us know as soon as they were ready to come in and speak to that. It, it's certainly going to be, you know, probably late spring at the, my guess, late spring at the earliest. And have, has the town asked them um, where they stand on, on, on that with us? Have we, have we ever asked them how they, I mean, were they used to give us money for a police department? Um, we stopped it because I guess we couldn't provide the services they needed <clears> or <throat> the staffing. Um, I just, I'm, I feel like we go too long in between conversations to, to keep a pace or build any momentum for people that may not be up to par, including myself on all of this. Um, but I, I, When's the last time we had a conversation with them about our police force or our police staff and, and how they felt about it? They, I mean, regardless of their five-year plan, maybe we can just have a conversation with them and say, hey, here's what we're seeing. How, is there, how do you think you can work with us? Yeah, I haven't had one specifically with, uh, with them with regards to those topics at this point. I did start, a, we started a quarterly meeting with them uh, we right. just had one before Christmas, um, you know, so we'll be having another one in uh, yeah, probably in March. Maybe, maybe at that next quarterly meeting, the board could prep and have, have something ready for you to speak to on that and just ask or have a board member present um, to, to kind of ask questions on behalf sure. of the town. Yep. I mean, I think that, that would be a good idea. Um, maybe. I don't know if, if Dave or Flo or anybody would be interested in doing that, but it, it's a conversation that, that could really benefit the town tremendously and the taxpayers, but it's going to require a little bit of early involvement. So, yeah. I'd be willing to, and if Dave wanted to, you know, that's fine too. Um, but I do agree with you that I think it's important to go forward with a discussion and it makes sense to start that with the next quarterly meeting. And as to when we last had the discussion, I don't have that date either, but I know it hasn't been since Vince's been on board. Right. So thank you. Thank you. Anything else for round table, Vince? No, I'm, I'll be quiet now. So, I mean, thank not you, good. Vince. Uh, not that you're gonna be quiet, but thank you for what you presented. Thank you for that information. I don't, you, I mean, I think that's the best way to proceed right now. Don't you Vince with the hospital? Yeah, I, no, I think it's good. Uh, just to, uh, now that you asked me a question, I got to give you more information. Sorry. Um, we're, we're, <laughs> we are currently, Tom, more, more than myself, but we are currently discussing with the hospital. They want to get on our water system in a bad way and get rid of their, uh, 
get rid of their tower because uh, they, they're going to have to sink a lot of money in that tower apparently to, to keep it functioning properly. Um, so we are, the, Tom is working with the Public Works Board now looking at numbers, what their consumption is, what our capacity is, um, and do we have enough uh, to put them on our system. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that, that's good news for the, you know, for the Public Works, right? That, that's a big customer, big paying customer right there. Um, so that is, uh, that's evolving as we speak. Okay, that's good to know. Anybody else? Uh, Flo, do you have anything for Roundtable? I do not tonight, but thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brad, Dave? No. Well, neither do I. Um, <laughs> so, I guess that brings us to the point in time where we would entertain a motion to enter executive session for a personnel discussion. I make the motion to enter into oh. executive session for personnel discussion. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 We're, aye. We're session. Not quite yet. I've got to put everybody back in the waiting room, Justin. Have a good yeah. evening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Exited executive session and uh, adjourn bell in one. We can do that, right, Brad? I just let the uh, waiting room back in, so we're we're good. We're out of executive session. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Those those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone. you all. Thanks, Brad. Yep. Vince. Yes, sir. On that discussion with Corinne. Yes. We don't, it's not up to us to set her salary. That's Rosemary's. Yes. That's where I was coming from, too. In, in fairness, Rosemary has asked me a couple of times uh, about making an adjustments to that, that she thinks there should be something. She hasn't given me anything, but asked me to propose something. Well, that whole thing should be done. That whole thing should be done with her um, budget. Any increase for cringe should be in Rosemary's budget. 